the explanation of significant movements identifies six hundred thousand uh, dollars for the African Communities uh, Community Safety Program. Can the minister provide um, some further clarification on this? Was this a the, the, it's a program to prevent youth violence under within the African South Australian community? Um, I understand that it came from a body of work taken by the African Communities Council, uh, and that was then funded. Is this funding a direct allocation under the Multicultural Priority Fund or another grant program, or was it a specific allocation of new money to the budget uh, approved by Cabinet? New money approved by Cabinet is part of the budget for 24-25. Um, I think you, yourself, were, you were briefed uh, quite extensively about the great work that the African Communities Council did. Um, I have to say it is sometimes challenging for a community to um, accept that there are areas that need improvement and I give great attention and recognition for the work of the leadership um, through Dennis Yingi to say uh, this is something that the community needs help on. And therefore, they did six months of consultation and research um, on that working group on youth violence and crime in the wake of a violent behaviour of a small minority of young South African South Africans in early 2022. The report was presented um, in 2022, um, and, or sorry, established in June 2022 with support from the Department of Premier and Cabinet and also the Department of Human Services. Um, there was uh, quite a dedicated uh, working group with that, um, that who had focus groups, surveys and small group interviews. Um, and they did a lot of community interviews, including elders and religious leaders, young people, families and women. Um, state government representatives and non-government services were also consulted as well. Um, can I just recognise work of correctional services within this who freed up one of their key workers to be part of that review? Um, since that time, it, they produced the report and had 39 recommendations. Um, post that report uh, being presented to government, uh, we continue to host some roundtable meetings with the African Communities Council of South Australia, uh, with members of the African Women's Federation representatives of the Department of Human Services, Department for Education, SAPOL and the Department of Correctional Services. What we wanted to do was have a shared understanding of the challenges that need to be addressed and that were highlighted in the report. A key outcome of one of the major round tables was to connect the African Communities Council with the Legal Services Commission, particularly to consider opportunities for legal education and delivery for community information sessions. Um, this year we've continued to meet regularly with the African Communities Council, state government departments and other services providers to show our commitment. And as you mentioned in the state government, uh, the, we, as a part of the budget, uh, we have now made the decision of 2.5 million over four years to support the community. Um, in many ways of how we can um, increase that support to young African South Australians to counter African youth violence. Well, thank you for that. And um, yes, as the Minister said, the, the opposition was briefed, and I'll thank Dennis Yangi as well, along with uh, Dr Yilma uh, Walder, Wald Gabriel and Mens Segret, who were the ones who came and provided that briefing. Um, and the Parliament record will record the, uh, the attention that we drew uh, to it. So we're, we're pleased that the government has paid attention to the report. I think the minister in her response identified it as $2.5 million over four years. And that uh, work is, well, can I clarify in relation to that funding? So it's $600,000 in this year. Is the minister able to identify uh, how that $600,000 this year is being spent and is it comprising grants to uh, community groups? If so, which ones and uh, for what purpose? Yeah. The package will include measures aimed at strengthening connections between young, South, young African South Australians and their education through improved cultural education support and a community support program 
There will also be additional funding available to help community organisations better support young people and their families. Um, we're also going to be expanding the education and support for those at risk of um, entering the youth justice system to reduce the chances of re-offending. There will also be additional operational support to the African Community Councils of South Australia. In the future, we'll announce more of the interventions and um, investments in the near future. So, to kind of clarify, my hearing's not so great at the moment and I don't have my aid. The, you said there will be further announcements to come about that. Yeah. Um, I might, nevertheless, seeing as the money's in the budget paper, seek to tease out any of it, and if you're able to provide some answers, that may be helpful. So I got the purpose of the funding, including education, helping young people engage with their education. There will be funding for some community groups, uh, education for groups at risk, and some support for the African Communities Council. Um, are you able to uh, put a dollar figure on any of, well, on, on the support for African Communities Council or all the funding available for community groups? Um, there is some specific uh, funding, which is similar to funding that's been continuing for the last previous years for the African Communities Council. We're in for not final negotiations of that okay. at a similar level to what was beforehand. Um, perhaps I think there's some interest in this. Um, obviously, we'll be working with the Department of Human Services looking at some of the work that is already provided and the opportunity to expand that work, particularly I have a particular interest and as identified in the report for people before they enter the justice system that perhaps are showing us that they um, are getting themselves into challenging situations. Um, I also think the work of the education department is quite strong, and their cultural liaison officers, um, but these are things to be worked out. Um, because this is a four-year program, um, I also want to acknowledge the work that we have, particularly in the northern region of many of our um, African associations who particularly are supporting parents who find um, there are challenges with intergenerational parenting um, and how to support them as well. So it will be quite a comprehensive package, um, the details of yet which are still going to uh, be negotiated. And uh, do I take from that then some of the funding is likely to uh, work through uh, supporting the Department of Human Services in delivering new programs, uh, maybe even the Department for Education as well? Or? Yeah, so what we want to do is recognise the work that's already occurring and look at if it can be expanded um, and in greater depth. So it's not really to completely reinvent the wheel all over the place, to look at areas where government is already connected to African South Australians, um, doing good work, um, but there could be more emphasis, particularly in prevention of some of those, of the children, particularly and young people um, who have identified some challenging behaviours, how we can get in there and support them. Uh, do you have an idea at this stage of whether there is likely to be funding for um, any NGOs uh, other than those African community organisations and the African Communities Council that you've described? Uh, obviously, uh, they were um, a key part of the report process. Um, for example, uh, uh, MISA, Multicultural Youth of South Australia, do some prevention programs already funded mostly by the Commonwealth. Um, all of those, uh, I guess, non-government organisations that provide services, we have in conversations with, um, but that hasn't been determined at this point. All right, and um, has the funding included uh, some provision of budget for there to be analysis uh, or review of the effectiveness of the program uh, as, at some stage over the four years? Well, that is something that takes place with all this type of um, additional funding that comes through. Um, we know that this has been recognised as an area of need in South Australia. Once again, I commend the community for putting their hand up during the work to say um, we want to make sure that where we see increasing numbers of incarceration, we want to turn that around. We've done the work to show where those recommendations are and we've now taken whole of government approach to see what we can do to assist. Thank you. Um, we'll go to page 27. Um, the third dot point under targets talks about the ambassador program. Um, 
last year, you'll recall under highlights, there was a highlight of introducing the ambassador program to activate the multicultural charter, embed its principles within organisations, and now we have a target to scale up that charter with the same sort of purpose. Uh, I understand that the initial one was a six-month pilot. Uh, it began in August 2023. Can the minister outline the outcomes of that pilot? Look, we're just, we haven't actually finished the pilot at this point. We, we are near to the end of it. And I have to say that um, it's probably one of the programs that uh, we started with the intention uh, to see if we can um, have individual companies reflect on the diversity in their workplace. And I've been incredibly surprised at the passion and the interest of those involved in the pilot program uh, to support it. So we are in the final stages of that pilot. Um, so we'll obviously take that time to reflect on where we go. Um, the Ambassador Program was launched on the 23rd of November, 2023. Um, what it is, is an election commitment aimed at enacting the South Australian Multicultural Charter, which was tabled in Parliament in the 9th of March, 2023. We want to embed the Charter um, and its principles within the workforce, business practices and service delivery of South Australian organisations. As you said, it was a six-month pilot involving five organisations from the private, not-for-profit and local government sector. The Cancer Council of South Australia, the City of West Torrens, Mitsubishi Motors, Australia Limited, PKF Adelaide and the RAA Group all participated in the pilot program. What we wanted to just demonstrate is how the Charter can be adopted in different types of workplaces and support South Australian organisations to prioritise their cultural diversity. Uh, what those participant organisations do is have a self-assessment that they complete themselves, which is designed to identify the baseline of cultural diversity and awareness within their workplace. Each participating organisation is also hosting an activation session to support learning and share insights into that. Um, we've had several of those um, activation sessions and, of course, we've taken some feedback from that as well. Um, the City of West Torrens were the first off the mark and they had a presentation from the Multicultural Communities Council about their cultural IQ training. In March, the Cancer Council of South Australia has a, pre had a presentation from Carmen Garcia from Community Corporate. In April of this year, PKF had a presentation from Jane Johnston from Study Adelaide. And when I say they had a presentation, they hosted the event and all the participants came along to those events. And in May um, of this year, the RAA had a panel session involving employers from themselves and PKF Adelaide, sharing their lived experience as an employer from migrant background and opportunity and locks for their organisation. I think at the end of this month, Mitch and BC Motors will be holding a round table and then just after that, the pilot concludes. Um. Have, has the Minister had an indication from those five organisations, uh, for example, whether they'll continue to be multicultural ambassadors moving forward when we move yeah. past the pilot? Can I get you to bring the microphone up? Yeah. Do we know if those five organisations will continue uh, with the program moving forward once the pilot stage is concluded? Yeah, that's the intention that we have. Um, our intention is to call them foundation members and uh, when we do the next round of um, organisations, they will make sure that they can and share their experiences as they continue to implement. Um, for example, uh, Mitsubishi Motors has conducted a review of their policies of, through a culturally and linguistically diverse lens. They're now going to offer culturally, cultural comp competence training as part of their leadership training. So that will be something that they continue to do ongoing. Uh, the RAA are looking to expand their graduate program to international students. They've conducted some internal reviews and consultations looking at their policies. Um, and I'm really pleased that they've all offered to continue to be foundation members um, to encourage other organisations to participate and to talk about their learnings that they've had. Uh, given that it's a pilot program, is there, and, and given what the Minister said, before about the African uh, uh, Community Violence Program, the expectation being in that sense, in that program, that there would be a review of some sort. Is this pilot being reviewed? Is there likely to be a report that's made public at some stage? Well, that's because that's an internal. 
review that will take place. Obviously, after a pilot program, we want to make sure that what we're offering is working. Um, there are some tweaks that we'll already make for the next program about the time that we're asking organisations to be involved and the attendances at those five events that we've had. Um, we want it to be something that people embrace. Um, they ask questions, they reflect on their own internal processes, but we don't want it to be onerous either. Uh, can the Minister advise on the timing of uh, whether there's a date she expects the pilot to have concluded by and whether there's a date that she expects the full program to be launched by? I'm hosting a reception in August which will launch the next round of the program and then it will start and kind of end the pilot and then it will start again in September. Uh, do we have a sense of businesses that are approaching the department already seeking to be part of that program? How many businesses do we expect or organisations do we expect uh, will be participating in the next expansion of the program? So our expectation is the next round or the first round, that's not the pilot, 10 organisations will participate in that. Um, we're looking for a diversity of organisations in the private sector and the not-for-profit sector and a few um, local councils as well. Um, we have uh, looked at having a spread within each of the rounds uh, because people learn from each other. Um, while I have some names I'm, I'm not able to share with them to the House because they haven't formally agreed. Um, we approach them um, or they approach us, which we've already had, um, and that new program will start in September. And sorry, is that 10 inclusive of the five foundation members or 10 additional? The 10 additional. And do we have uh, a budget specifically for this program on uh, the establishment costs and then the annual business as usual costs going forward? So we did have 30,000 uh, per annum attached to this because resourcing's done internally. Right, I think I might move on to my next one, which is a target... Oh, hang on, sorry, I've got my pages out of order. <laughs> We're only three pages in, excellent. Well, I might just do a couple more questions on the same target. Um, obviously, the Multicultural Charter uh, was supported with bipartisan support, coming as it did from the new Multicultural Act, which was from the previous Liberal government. So you have our bipartisan support in that charter. Um, obviously, there is a newly constructed multicultural commission uh, which replaced the old SAMIAC. Uh, can the minister indicate... I, I, I think the current board members' terms expire uh, within days. Can the minister advise about the selection process for the new board members? So the selection process uh, was the same as under the previous government. Um, we Obviously, these current commission members were appointed for three years, from the 1st of July 2001 to the 30th of June 2024. Uh, we did have some resignations during this time, um, but um, I want to thank the current existing membership of the commission. Um, I was able to host them um, recently here in Parliament House to thank them for the work that they do um, and um, then of course the waiting to see. Uh, we had expressions of interest open on the 16th of February 2024 and closed on the 4th of March. 132 submissions were received for positions on the Commission for 2024 to 2027 um, and I will announce that publicly on the 1st of July. You wouldn't like to um, give us an early sense of uh, whether people have been reappointed? No. Ah. The Minister declines to provide advice to the committee, sir. <laughs> I think the process that was uh, brought to our position post the new legislation was continued um, and we proceeded that way. Hender Consulting was involved as they were, I think, last time as well. Um, and I have to say that I was absolutely delighted to see that um, 132 people expressed their interest in being part of the Commission. It is actually quite a bit of work to be part of the Commission, uh, whether you're on the panels, 
uh, whether you're attending events. And of course, I've actually asked the Commission to be far more engaged with uh, our uh, diverse community through community consultations. Um, this is something we've started up in the last few months. To actually go out there and hold these consultations, the first was with the Hindu community, the second the Afghan community, and to invite people to talk about uh, some of the challenges what's working well, what are their challenges for in their community. Um, so I have high expectations of the work of the Commission members and I want to thank the current Commission members. Um, they particularly came in at a time where COVID was still very impactful for the community. Um, what was very challenging at that time is quite a few social events couldn't take place um, because of the restrictions. Um, and um, some community groups have found it hard to continue. Others have completely flourished since that time. So I once again thank them for the work that they've done um, and I look forward to announcing that in the near future of the new commission. So thank the minister for that and I, I too hope that many of those people have wonderful times on the commission. Hopefully some of the ones who have served us so well are able to continue doing so. Uh, we'll go to a different dot point. The first target goes to the work of community language schools. Um, can the minister uh, identify... Well, uh, last year the minister outlined that funding for multicultural affairs was allocated to increase staffing at Community Language Schools SA to provide intensive case management and curriculum development services for new and existing language schools for an initial 12 months. Uh, will funding for this increased staffing continue or are these additional positions coming to an end? So every year we uh, um, sit down with community language schools and talk about the next agreement, um, looking at what um, has come to fruition and what we need to do going forward. Um, it was a substantial investment of $4 million over four years that we had as an election commitment um, to those community language schools. And of course we work quite closely with the Department for Education and Community Language Schools SA to deliver on this election commitment. There are currently 88 active and fully accredited community language schools teaching 46 community languages. And at semester one, 2024, there were 7,862 enrolments in the program. We executed a funding agreement on the 12th of July, 2023 for this current financial year. And the focus has been around premises, personnel and pathways this year. The premises continue to up, top up the funding for government and non-government schools that host our community language schools. Personnel continue supporting additional staffing for community language schools SA and professional development training for community language school leaders. And pathways, which is a new priority which was added in this past year is to support Community Language Schools South Australia to offer vocational and safe pathways for secondary students who study a language at our community language schools. Um, something that I'm particularly um, pleased about is this establishment of community language learning hubs at Regency Park TAFE, Salisbury TAFE and at Torrens University. The aim is to cluster several of these community language schools together to share learning spaces, materials and equipment at the moment, we have a total of 10 schools offering nine languages to 368 students. As we develop these hubs going further, um, what they'll actually be is incubators. So particularly for newer schools that are just starting or very small schools, and by um, hubbing them together with others, um, they have that shared um, experience about learning, um, about some of the ways that you support volunteers, um, and we've had great response to that. I'm also pleased to say that we have developed um, through well, Community Language Schools they say their digital language learning hub to share teaching and learning e-resources in Arabic, Mandarin, Vietnamese, Greek and Farsi. Um, in this past financial year, um, they've also delivered the infrastructure grants programs and eight organisations were awarded up to $100,000 to develop or upgrade their community-owned facilities. Can the Minister advise if, um, so premises, personnel and pathways was what I took from that. Can the Minister advise if any of the uh, additional funding for community language schools 
his being provided in the um, per annum grants per student to schools, uh, in addition to, so I've got premises supporting uh, where there's a top up required for the place where the schools are taking place, personnel which was supporting the central organisation and the pathways program, so that those three funding streams. Uh, well, maybe I could reframe the question. Let's start with, are we able to identify how much is going into each of those three pathway, th uh, th those three programs? How That's much for premises, how much for personnel, and how much for pathways? Okay. I'll break that down for you. So it's a total of 481,370, uh, an, an increased funding to Catholic and independent host schools of 105,270. Um, that was obviously a considerable change that started last year. So we're quite agnostic about where these community language schools are held. I think it's something you and I have spoken about before. Yes, that was um, a good decision. So we have just had a question about how many schools, and more than a dozen are participating. Now, of course, some schools have multiple campuses as well. Um, but that, the reflection on that, that's gone very well. The community language learning hubs, as I talked, was 71,000. Staffing, 100,000. Governance and continuous improvement training of 400,000. Uh, the school, pers school personnel training, 20,000. The digital learning, la learning hub, 75,000. And culturally diverse vocational pathways for SACE and non-SACE students, 70,000. 113,000 has been, 730 has been allocated to the Department for Education to administer the increased funding to government host schools. And of course, in this 23-24, there was funding for those infrastructure grants. So the, oh, sorry, I missed governance and continuous improvement training of $40,000. So the total expenditure for year two of this election commitment was 1.095 million. Thank you. And are those uh, figures which the Minister just went through, are they going to be uh, replicated in Year 3 and Year 4 of the program as well? Okay. So in general, we have a, a, a continuous funding that goes over the four years. There are two years that are slightly different, so we run the infrastructure program every two years. So that infrastructure grants program won't be taking place this year, but is to take place next year? 25-26. And in terms of the per student funding that goes to the community language schools, that will continue through education as it was previously and isn't this relevant This has just adds a multicultural lens to the support. Um, uh, something that I, I think and the government thinks is incredibly important to support these community language schools. So um, I, I may have missed it. Was there a reference in one of those funding streams to um, needs-based funding for community language schools, or was that particularly in relation to where the, when we talk about needs-based funding in this sense, is that for the schools that needed extra support for their uh, physical location? Needs-based funding is part of that larger figure that I mentioned. I just didn't break it down. Um, in the figures that I gave you. In the? The figures that I gave you were the new areas that um, had come into fruition this year. Is the Minister able to identify which schools received additional funding identified as being needs-based? Obviously the community languages of South Australia will have that detail. Thank you. And in terms of uh, the decisions about which schools receive how much money or, or how much support, is that also coordinated through Community Language Schools SA or is, that, is there another process? Yeah, it's a per student amount, so it's not that one school gets it and one school doesn't. Every school receives that needs-based funding. And do all of this, does all of this funding covered by that grants and subsidies line on page 28, or is there a, 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 a different breakup?
It's all covered under the grants and subsidies on page 28. Does that grants and subsidies line, and sorry, so we're on page 28 again. Um, the $1 million funding agreement that was announced in uh, earlier this month with the University of South Australia and Flinders University for the maintenance and support for Italian language teaching, does that also come from the multicultural affairs budget or does that come from somebody else's budget? Uh, Minister Close is responsible for that funding. Can I just take one step back to the previous discussion we were having about the Ambassadors Program? and the Multicultural Commission. Uh, what was the involvement of the Multicultural Commission and its members um, with that ambassador program? I know that the minister referred to Carmen Garcia as being engaged with one of those, um, but was there, was there any other engagement with the Multicultural Commission or its members? Yeah, obviously um, they were very involved in the formation of the Charter and at the beginning of the uh, discussion around the ambassadors program, they were fully briefed about that and in fact have been um, promoting the ambassadors program. Were there any members other than Carmen Garcia who were directly involved in the program? Carmen wasn't involved per se because of her work as a commission member. We recognised the work in her community corporate, particularly dealing with the recruitment of people from a diverse way of backgrounds. All right, so um, she was involved in a professional sense rather than a commission sense. So were any members of the commission involved in the ambassador program in a direct sense and have they provided feedback or, or review accordingly? Yeah. So um, obviously they're involved in the promotion of the ambassador's program and the chair of the Multicultural Commission, um, who also works for the City of West Torrens, uh, volunteered for them to be a key part of the pilot program and I thank her for uh, providing them as an opportunity to be part of the pilot. Can I um, go to dot point five under highlights, the Multicultural Women's Micro Business Fund, yeah. which I've heard the Minister speak about on, on occasion. Uh, how much funding has been allocated to the Multicultural Women's Micro Business Fund? It was 100,000 in the initial year. Um, it was part of an election commitment to bring back the launch me for multicultural women and 108,000 as I'm advised in the second year. Um, this was a, a program that we engaged with Good Shepherd Australia New Zealand to deliver this multicultural women's micro business fund program. Um, we know that um, when people are starting a business from scratch, it's both challenging and exciting. Um, and this is an opportunity in us, in a focus around making South Australia more inclusive, culturally aware place to live, to study, work and thrive. Um, the program was a pilot from the July to December 2023 and 10 culturally and linguistically diverse women in the Northern Adelaide region who had a viable business idea, who'd had, or had, who had recently established a micro enterprise, was supported to develop their skills and confidence to start, manage and grow their business. Um, it includes personal business coaching sessions, financial assistance, networking opportunities, and access to Good Shepherd's wraparound services. Um, I was really pleased to see the diversity of women who attended, um, their diverse cultural backgrounds from Chile, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Peru, Iraq, and Ghana. And they've been empowered to establish their businesses here. Um, how were those women uh, identified? Were they selected by Good Shepherd or did they, was there a, a, a com competitive application process? Uh, there was, they were approached by Good Shepherd who have run this program previously um, for several years, not always with a multicultural lens, um, but a previous thing and they've gone out. Um, can I just say the current program participants are from Lebanon, Samoa, Venezuela, Burundi, El Salvador, India, the Philippines and Algeria. Just again in terms of wrapping up the, uh, the funding side of this one, is, that also, is this also from that grants and subsidies budget line on page 28? Yes, yes it is. And is, it, um, is this program funded ongoing through 
uh, is the expectation that Good Shepherd will be maintained for a period of time to come to keep running these programs over the coming years? We're in negotiations about that right now. Um, but there is a budget allocation going forward for yes. it for the full four years of the... Yeah, the budget allocation for this year is 108000 for 24-25. So if Good Shepherd has approached the 10 women in the original version of the program, is it anticipated that that will be the model that Good Shepherd will, through their community engagement, be aware of opportunities and will approach people directly? Or is there an opportunity for uh, women to uh, apply directly for the program in a, in a more sort of transparent way? Yes, so the pilot was run initially at the beginning of 23-24, and then the second cohort was in the next six months, and then this year it'll be spread across the whole of South Australia, not just the northern area. So the Facebook page, um, and of course those participants themselves have been uh, going out and promoting it as well. And then presumably if, pe if it's promoted broadly and people uh, make an application, the selection process is done by, uh, is there an uh, independent assessment panel or is it Good Shepherd or Good Shepherd. the department? Yeah, Good Shepherd um, handle all of that. They go through the process. Um, obviously, people have to be, um, even if they've got a great idea or they've just started their micro enterprise, they have to be ready to participate in the program. Um, obviously, one of the key parts about it is um, that financial assistance and networking opportunities and the business coach. So we, um, even if people are keen to participate, timing events come into it. So we talk, to, uh, Good Shepherd talks to them about their ability to participate at that time. Um, I understand on the Good Shepherd website there's uh, an advertisement for, and it's, I'm reading here, Launch Me for Multicultural Women in Northern Adelaide. Was that the, um, is that the same program that we're talking about? This yes. Okay. Yes, I understand it is. And can the Minister clarify, um, she talked about the pilot group and then there's a, another group that has been going through. How many women in, it were 10 in the pilot group, how many women in the second group? Up to 10 as well. And in coming rounds, is it expected to be the same? Say so about 10. 10 per year? Per, well, I think there'll be two rounds per yes. year. Two rounds per year. Um, and obviously to keep that intensity of the ability to support the development of that business. And this program, as the others, will have a review, internal or external, and will it be publicly reported? Always. Hang on. <laughs> internal or external, and publicly reported? Well, of course, um, I have to say Good Shepherd um, are very clear. I think there's a publicly available document looking at Launch Me because they've used this in other areas. It's been um, mainstream, a Launch Me program, and of course it's multicultural and they advertise it, and we support that to do. Thank you. Go to the second dot point under targets, working with government agencies and key stakeholders to promote finding of the skills, qualifications and professional experience review and investigate opportunities to enact the recommendations. Um, can the Minister outline the results of the review of migrant community skills, qualifications and professional experiences undertaken, as I understand, by Deloitte to Matsu in 2023? Yeah, look, Deloitte have provided me with the final report um, in May of 2024, and it shows the evidence the current trends of underutilisation of unsure migrants across Australia. Now, of course, we've just had some recent portfolio changes and um, Susan Close is now um, the Minister for Work Workforce and Population Strategy. So we will look forward to working with her and across government agencies to address these opportunities um, that were raised in the report. Um, I was really pleased in the consultation phase that was done by Deloitte's. Um, they met with migrant communities and multicultural community organisations and diverse public and private sector stakeholders. Um, they received more than 400 responses to their survey um, to build an evidence base and support the policy development 
to look at that. The review was informed by latest quantitative and qualitative data on skilled migration and implies that economic modelling using Deloitte's regional general equilibrium model. Is that report going to be made public? It will in the future. Do you have an estimated time frame on that? In good time. I this think year? what is most important about this is um, it, this was an election commitment. We um, went to uh, the election with a fully concise policy document. And one of the challenges that's been raised with me, particularly by skilled migrants and international students, was some of the barriers they found to participating fully in the South Australian economy. And that's why we did this work. It was also based about some of the work done in Queensland in 2018. Obviously, um, you've seen our state prosperity plan, but we also have quite a few major infrastructure projects coming up. Uh, Torrance to Darlington, of course, Women's and Children's Hospital. Um, we are at a time of growth and we need skills on board. So a key uh, focus around this is given what we want to achieve, and particularly with AUKUS coming, um, how do we maximise the uh, skills of migrants who are already here in South Australia? And so that was what the work was focused around. So with this report that will hopefully be made public this year, did it include any recommendations? The recommendations are quite um, uh, looking at rec skills recognition, which is something we've looked at before, um, but also about uh, networking opportunities here um, and a few of the other areas as well. So some, to some extent, these are, are not new things that have been brought up, but what we really want to do is look at a consolidated set of uh, where that opportunity lies. And oh. so we'll be responding to that in good time. Given that the report hasn't yet been made public, um, but the Minister has said the Government will be responding to those recommendations. Uh, is the Government in a position to identify when the Government will respond to those recommendations? In the near future. How much did the review cost? So uh, the total uh, allocated over two financial years, 95875 22-23 and 79,829 and 23-24. Um, from the basis of what the Minister's answer was before, describing the recommendations, is the Department for Education and the Department for Innovation and Science and Industry, I think, DIS, the Deputy Premier's Department, uh, are they both involved in framing the government's response or is this yeah. being led by the, uh, the multicultural SA? Look, I, I think that we've seen more focus on this more than ever before and so across the board the whole of government uh, will reflect on the report and the opportunity that is before us. Is there any budget uh, that is provided towards implementation of the recommendations of this report? Uh, there's not a specific budget with this. Um, obviously, uh, with those portfolio changes, um, we've made it very clear that workforce is a key challenge for the future, for our future ambitions. Um, so there's no doubt at all that uh, whether it be through skills um, or upskilling um, or talking about maximising the use of all employees, um, this is a, a view for a whole of government. I'm going to move to uh, the fourth. Um, actually, well, this would still be in uh, in the general expenses line. Um, how much money was spent on hosting the South Australian Multicultural Festival in 2023, and, and what's the budget for 2024? Uh, thank you very much. Um, as you may recall that we made the decision um, through our election commitment to bring the Multicultural Festival on on an annual basis. Um, the aim of it is to strengthen cultural understanding, to encourage all South Australians to recognise cultural diversity as a positive influence in the community and provide a forum to celebrate new emerging and established cultures. It does also promote multiculturalism and community harmony. The first annual festival was held in Victoria Square 
Sunday the 12th of November. We held it from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. 74 multicultural community groups received grants through the Festival Grants Program to participate in the event. 55 cultures were represented across 29 performances, 13 activities and 35 stalls. Over 10,200 people attended the festival um, and the budget line for that was 444,000. That includes staff resources, event logistics and operations and grants to support the communities to participate. So um, the Minister identified gr some grants to... Correct. To correct, sorry, that was the budget and the total cost is 483,500. Thank you for that. Um, and I think the Minister identified there were some grants to community groups in amongst that. Was there also, uh, f given the involvement of multicultural um, affairs program, is there also some of that funding allocated from the employee expenses line and the supplies and services line, or would it all be counted under that grants and subsidies line? Yeah, salaries. Yes, it was within salaries and within grants. So a bit of both. Are you able to identify how much under each? Um, we might need to take that on notice. Thank you. And can I ask, um, in relation to the objective, um, talking about promoting community capacity and harmony and grants to community organisations, as I understand, there are sort of core funding allocations to groups like the Australian Migrant Resource Centre, Multicultural Communities Council SA. Uh, is the Minister able to identify if any of those organisations have received an increase in their core funding allocation in the last two years, or, is, uh, or, or has their funding remained static, or has it declined? Um, all core funding receives indexation for in multicultural affairs. I'm sure that we will have a, an omnibus question that will give the opportunity to provide the detail of that later. I'm going to jump to, mindful of the time, um, so again we're on page 28 and program expenses. Um, is, it, is the Minister able to, uh, and I'm happy for her to take this on notice if she'd like, it's up to her, I guess. Uh, I'm looking, I'm interested in a full reconciliation report of everything under the budget line of grants and subsidies. What do you mean by a reconciliation report? Uh, who's gotten what? Who's well, as you know, all grants are available, grant recipients are on the website. More than happy to read out those who have been successful. I'm less interested in how much, sorry, the names of them uh, unless there is also the uh, allocated figure of how much they've all got? So in general, we don't break down for each of the different grant lines. Um, but what we do talk about is how much uh, we have in the budget line. So the 23-24 Multicultural Grants Program was 6.661 million, um, and that included um, all the different types of one, Celebrate Together, um, Expand Grant, Stronger Together, and um, the Multicultural Festival was part of that as well. Oh, thank you. Um, in, I'm just gonna go to a different line. And, So under targets, uh, one of the targets is providing leadership and advice on development, monitoring and reporting of initiatives to enhance culturally and linguistically diverse employment mm -hmm. in the public sector. Mm -hmm. um, has the Office of the Commissioner for Public Sector Employment undertaken staff surveys to monitor and report on diversity of people who work for state government and has multicultural affairs been involved in the development of such a project? Yes, look, that um, survey did take place and I thank the Office for the Commissioner of Public Sector Employment 
um, in the ability for us to monitor and report on diversity in the public service. Um, this is something that I've been pursuing for quite some time and in fact uh, when we're in debating under the new South Australian Multicultural Commission legislation, um, I asked for it to be included in that which was um, not supported by the government of the day. But nevertheless, we continue to go ahead. Um, being the, state largest, the state's largest employer, the South Australian Public Service needs to represent and reflect the diverse and vibrant community it serves. Um, so through the part of the existing workforce information reporting and the People Matter, the Across Government Engagement Service, we ask questions for the very first time um, about uh, cultural and linguistic diversity within the public sector. And um, will those, will this report be made publicly available? Is there uh, some level of further interface? Yes, my, um, as advised, this is a report that is made public. I think they are finalising uh, the um, outcomes of that report at the moment. And this will be something that will be regularly done going forward? Yes, I intend to encourage them to support that. It's published annually, that report, and uh, my intention is that will be part of it. But of course, this is done in conjunction with the Commissioner. Has any funding uh, or, other, or financial support been required by the Commissioner from uh, Multicultural Affairs to support mm -hmm. this inclusion? <laughs> Yeah, the Commissioner has done this work within, within existing resources. Uh, but perhaps I might touch on the Ambassador Program. Um, as I spoke earlier, this is currently being run out, or the pilot was with uh, the private sector and the not-for-profit sector. In 2025, it's my intention to uh, start that work within government as well, with government departments. Um, so it might be a slightly different format. Uh, we're still uh, going through that process. But it's very much of my belief that in order to write the best policy for South Australia, we, the government, uh, the public service must reflect the South Australian population. Um, and so that's why we're taking that survey data and then looking at potential areas where, um, uh, when we did this on a gender lens, and we saw that women were in many different, uh, I guess, levels within the public service, but often not paid at the same amount as men. Um, what we will be looking for is things like unconscious bias in recruitment, uh, barriers to entry into the public service um, and things like that. So uh, we achieved a significant amount of change when we had a gender lens. My intention is to have a multicultural lens on the public service. There is a um, dot point under highlights on page 27 about the Multicultural Services Directory. Can the Minister outline the resources and funding allocated for the development and uh, ongoing maintenance of the Multicultural Resources Directory? I'm imagining there was an establishment cost and then an ongoing cost. Yes, yeah, so the Multicultural Directory once again was another election commitment um, in our comprehensive policy document that we took to the election for Multicultural Affairs. Um, the Australian Refugee Association was engaged to develop this directory. It's a free user-friendly web app that was launched on the 3rd of April 2024. Um, it was launched um, and developed in consultation with a range of stakeholders. Um, and I want to thank the bicultural staff at ARA, the Community Language Schools of South Australia, AM Australia, MCCSA and the African Women's Federation and the Muslim Australian Connections of South Australia. Um, we've got 150 organisations across more than 20 service categories um, who are identified, including health and wellbeing, women's services, employment, education, training and youth. Um, we um, I saw somewhere recently that more than 5,000 people have accessed this application. So the expenditure for the directory in 22-23 was 78,000 and in 23-24, dollars $20,000. For that. Um, we'll continue to um, work with ARA about how that might continue to develop. Um, I have to say I'm, I'm very pleased with um, the levels of access. Um, I particularly think in regards to health access information in language, you know, a pharmacist that speaks uh, different languages and knowing where that person might be, um, whether someone is a new migrant here who have been here for some time. 
um, having that access to one-stop shop for those services, um, something people have been asking for some time and um, we'll continue to monitor that. Is there a budget for multicultural communities to be uh, informed about the directory? What sort of promotion are we anticipating? Yeah, it's been part of what ARA was committed to doing with the establishment of the directory and that's why we've had more than 5,000 people go to the site already. Uh, sure, so is, is the government promoting it any further or just use, uh, uh, allowing ARA to uh, undertake so whatever under they're doing? Sure. So on a frequent basis, uh, we have an e-blast that is sent out from the department um, with messages from myself about upcoming grant rounds, for example, and then when the multicultural directory was launched, it was um, obviously put out on an e-blast and talked about that. And what criteria is being used to determine uh, who's listed and, and, and who is not? Who's, who's the decision maker there? So ARA um, it curates it, but it's actually really open for anyone who would um, like to register their service um, on the Multicultural Services app. So, and they moderate it or curate it, obviously, to make sure that it's appropriate for the time, um, but it's open for people to put on their services. And a lot of time. <sighs> A lot of time having expired, I declare the examination of multicultural affairs complete and refer the further examination of the proposed payments to Committee B. Member for Elizabeth. Thank you, sir. I move the sitting of the Committee be suspended until 10.15. That's seconded. Yes, sir. That's seconded. I put that was in favour say aye. Those against say no. I call it for the ayes. The Committee stands suspended until 10.15.